This is Mr. Zaveri's house. Notice the wind chimes and the beautiful Persian carpet. Wind chimes are a harmonious symbol from the Chinese culture. While the carpet has come from Iran. He has also ordered Japanese sushi and Italian pizza for lunch. Isn't it interesting that our lives today reflect intermingling of cultures? We live in an interconnected world where it takes a few seconds to get in touch with people living thousands of miles away. The process by which local, regional, or national phenomena get interlinked on a global scale is called globalization. Was our world as interconnected in the past as it is today? Let's find out. In the pre modern world, travelers, priests, traders, and pilgrims moved across countries in search of new lands, business and knowledge avenues, and spiritual fulfillment. They facilitated the exchange of knowledge, ideas, culture, food items, inventions, and even deadly diseases. During 3000 BCE, the flourishing trade along India's coast linked the Indus Valley Civilization with the present-day West Asia. The Old World was interlinked with the help of the well-established trade routes. For example, the Silk Routes connected Eastern, Southern and Western Asia with the Mediterranean world. North Africa and Europe. The silk routes were used to transport Chinese silk and pottery, Indian spices and textiles. The Asian countries also gained in return. Silver and gold came from Europe to Asia via these routes. Apart from this, these routes facilitated cultural exchange as they were used by early Christian missionaries and later on by Muslim preachers to travel to Asia. Buddhism also spread out from eastern India to the rest of the world through these routes. Interestingly, intercultural exchange also happened through the exchange of food items. In the pre-modern times, traders and travelers carried food items and crops to new lands. The story goes that traders and travelers took noodles from China to the Western world where they came to be known as spaghetti. Or maybe it was introduced by the Arab traders as pasta in the Italian island of Sicily in the 5th century. Food items like noodles are also found in India and Japan. So we cannot confirm their birthplace with certainty. Many food items that we eat today, such as potatoes, tomatoes, chilies, and sweet potatoes were not known in Asia. They came from the continent of Americas via Europe. In Europe, potato became a staple food of the poor peasants. In fact, the dependence on potato is evident from the fact that when the potato crop failed in the mid-1940s in Ireland, Lacks of people died of hunger. An important discovery took place on 12th of October 1492, which changed the face of world trade forever.
On this date, America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. Thanks to the new sea route, a long-hidden, bountiful land suddenly became accessible to the world. The sea routes to America and Asia reduced the boundaries of the pre-modern world. Earlier, the Indian subcontinent was the center of world trade due to the bustling trade activities in the Indian Ocean. The European traders directed this flow of trade to Europe as well. By the mid-16th century, Spanish and Portuguese conquerors had begun colonizing America. The Europeans conquered the Native Americans not only by the power of their mighty weapons, but also by deadly diseases like smallpox. Europeans unconsciously carried the germs of their diseases against which the Native Americans were not immune. Smallpox killed a large number of natives. Consequently, it became easy for the Europeans to conquer America. Meanwhile, people began migrating to the newfound America to overcome rampant poverty and hunger in Europe. Moreover, people were captured from Africa and used as slaves in the European markets. Till the 18th century, China and India remained important players in world trade. With the rise of America, Europe emerged as the new center of trade.